Hello there. And you, good sirs, very possible ladies, mostly sirs, are very, very live in this grand final for Master League's second tournament for Company of Heroes 3. You're looking at the awesome Dutchman. It's Jibber. He's as the United States Forces. I've got Tightrope all the way from New Zealand at 6 a.m. in the morning with me. How are you doing, Mr. Rope? Yeah, I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling upbeat and ready for some top-notch Company of Heroes 3 action. And uh, yeah, from the north here, we've got Alpen playing with the Wehrmacht. Oh, yes. We are uh, watching this game on a brand new map made by GB Pirate. It starts off at dawn and it gets a little bit lighter, incrementally so, as we see a fantastic battle over... It's, it's a big creek, basically. It's got a very interesting uh, territorial layout. Um, kind of looks a little bit kind of like a cross between Amelie Fields, maybe a little bit Crossroads inspiration. Tyra, have you seen any games on this map yet, sir? No, I, I watched GB Pirate's like, introduction video on it, but I haven't seen anybody play on it yet. <laughs> let's see how it works. I mean, let's uh, talk about the players, though. We've gone for Pathfinder spam from Jibber. Only uh, three at this point, but he may be queuing up another very shortly. What are you seeing from Alpern? Uh, no battle group selection at all so far. Just two pies, then into two greens. Oh, and they've got their bundles of sticks, tightrope. They're going to light some campfires. I believe there are a few uh, fires on this map already, so maybe they'll um, they'll come Infantry useful. They're ready for the cold tick. Exactly. This this river's going to freeze over, and all hell will freeze over before we see cold tech again. We've got height tech for this game, tightrope. And I'll just ask you a yeah. quick, quick question. You are in a grand final, so you know your voice is amplified a tiny bit more. Tightrope, are you enjoying Co3? What do you think of the bloody thing? Yeah, I mean, overall, I, I'm still enjoying, like, the gameplay, you know, but the the pace of change is not where I want it to be. No, it's not fast enough, is it? And obviously, as uh, they've concentrated a little bit too much on skins recently, but uh, the core of the gameplay's <laughs> there, and the core of the Master League's here. We've got some great players here, Jibber and Elpern, two real good servants of the scene, as well as soldiers of the tournaments. And uh, they des they're deservedly in this grand final. It'd be interesting to see if Jibber can uh, really pose a challenge to Alpern, because I think Alpern is the bookmaker's favourites for this one at this point. Speaking of elevation, I will have a guide coming out tomorrow, just going to get a short plug in here, explaining everything about the elevation mechanics. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, it's the second most important Patreon on this scene isn't the one that pays the Master League, it is indeed uh, the one that encourages Tightrope to make more and more very professional guides. So go check him out on his YouTube and check out his Patreon as well. Um, second only to the Master League in terms of importance. I'm sorry for Tightrope. <laughs> but it's still bloody important. Yeah, it's your, book. it's you're... your broadcast, right? You can say what you want. <laughs> well, you're going to say yours is more important. Your guides are absolutely crucial to the scene. I used to, like, the tips and tricks videos, I used to make notepad files of all the things I'd learned from them. And I applied, like, one in ten. But still, that one was important. Pioneer in peril being pushed away. Meanwhile, so are the engineer squads. This pioneer will stay the course. But here we go. We've got to... Cut off on retreat. Jibber's going to get the kill. Will he get it, Tightrope? Uh, it's looking likely. A bit of run and gun. It is indeed. He gets it. I'm at 4 minutes it's... and 13. Sorry, I'll tell you exactly where I'm at. 4 minutes 20. I'm going to do a micro pause. You tell me where you are. Yeah, and I'll unpause. You ready? Yeah, I'm 425, 26, 27, Okay, you 28. do the same now. We were actually in, in sync, actually. My bad. <laughs> you do the same, I'm at 4, 31, 32, 33, yep, 34, in. good. Just checking, just checking there. Sniper's out for Jibber. He's gotten a kill on retreat. It was a very low cost unit that died, but it all matters. And the M16's going to be hitting soon as well. So Jibber certainly seems to be in the ascendancy here. Yeah, old Vimak, they just have such a slow start. You know, Greedy is so weak, Piney is quite weak. And U.S. just hit the field so fast, it's very hard to keep up in these early phases before you get your Jaegers out, typically. Yeah, the Jaegers are the crutch of the Wehrmacht at the moment. It's been the MG42 in the previous two games, but at this point in time, it's all about the Jaegers. We'll um, 
cool that the M13 is going to become the quad mount in soon. Also, we've got Jibber has gone for the infantry support center, which is very important um, for a multitude of abilities, but the survival training is pretty important. And also the munition surplus to get the better cooldowns. Well, we're uh, already about 100 points behind here for Alpern. He's off to a, a bit of a rough go. Yeah, he really is. It's not looking uh, too comfortable at the moment. But here's that first Jaeger squad. And there's the M16 making its presence felt. And just look at the swathe of blue taking up Tunisian Pass. Yep, Panzer Shrek about to pop on that Jaeger. And popping out of combat is not what he wants to do. And the sniper is just absolutely bullish at the moment. Doesn't even need to go into camouflage mode. He's just plugging away. Oh, he can't quite get in range for a Shrek shot there. That's a heartbreaker for Alpin. Paratrooper squad lands. I'm sure these are going to go. There they are. Actually, he's going for LMGs. What is this madness? He's so far ahead. Tight rope. He's not going for bazooka. He's going for LMGs. That is uh, str that's Jibber feeling strong. Would you say? Yeah. Well, <laughs> when is uh, when is he going to get a vehicle out? You know, like <laughs> looking very bad for Alpin at the moment in terms of fuel. Yeah, it really is. It's just a dream start for the Dutchman and a terrible start for the Swede. Ah. Oh no. Oh, there's a pyro and some major trouble. Yep. Oh, very dead there. Ooh. Oh, Alpin, you got to turn this one around, buddy. This is not looking good. Certainly bloody isn't. Oh, the sniper. Oh, he gets back into it there. Jaegers pick up the sniper. That was unexpected, to be honest. I really, I had a feeling the sniper could be in trouble, but I didn't expect the Jaegers to get the kill. Yeah, well, that Panzer Tricker can actually do some decent anti-infantry in this game. So, I think it, it did about half health, I think, to the sniper with one trick shot. Wow. There you go. From unexpected source of damage, the Panzer Shrek gets, gets um, Alpern into the game there. <laughs> 221 was built to be a sniper counter, but it's unwanted now. <laughs> Maybe he's going to put the uh, Panzer Busch on this. Oh, uh, yeah. Is that how you say it? It's Buxer, I've been told today Buxer. by Germans. Genuine Germans have helped me with that. It was un unnecessary 2-2-1, two, two, though. Any 2-2-1 two, two, is usually an unnecessary 2-2-1, two, two, but especially this one. I suppose the thing he brought it out to counter is already dead, though, so it's not the worst position to be in. Well, charging forwards with the Panzerschreck, trying to get some damage on that quad, but just really good management of the range at the moment by Jibber. Oh, here comes that Shrek against infantry again. More than enough to force the captain away and his retinue. Smoke utilised by the Jaeger just to keep the M16 out of dodge as... Is it going to go for it? Possibly. Let's wait and see. Already under 250 VPs for Alpin. He's oh. really got to get on one of these points. He's draining out so fast. He bloody is. It's not looking good for him at the moment. And don't forget, Alpern was in the last grand final against Ray, formerly known as Ashablar, in ML1. So it would be very psychologically demoralizing if he were to lose two in a row. Meanwhile, Jibber hasn't got the same pressures on his shoulders, to be honest. Oof. Pens of books or whatever is uh, being upgraded as we speak, but the quad's charging in while it's still upgrading. Yep. Call an ambulance, but not for me moments. The hunted has become the hunter and the predator has become the prey there we go big shot there 60 percent health remaining can he follow up where is he here he comes it's an unwieldy beast yes he gets him again <laughs> oh but the bazooka's okay he has to get out of there he can carry on now and he knows it he knows he can carry on surely he's gonna go hunting indeed he is Oh, he can't navigate this big rock. Yeah, yeah the pathfinding is not in his favour here. Not working out Watch at all. Watch Tightrope's videos. Little tiny clicks in front of the 221, everybody. Tiny little clicks. <laughs> That's what you want to do. 
you can't rely on Co3 to do the pathfinding for you, can you, Titan Rip? You have to do it for it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's hard. Yeah. yeah, that's one area where it still needs some major work. Yeah, let's bloody hope it's coming. Let's hope so. Couldn't get past Tabletop Mountain. All the one behind it. What's this? Red smoke. Three from the uh, captain, I believe. Ah, nice. Yep. It's, it must be a Ford Observer Mortar Barrage. Very similar to the one that the Major had in Code 2. Yeah. Gone but not forgotten. Clearly. Mine detonates there. Showing that we've got the... Uh, Oh, we don't actually have that. That would be anti-tank anyway. Must just be the engineers that planted that. Of course they have. Meanwhile, we do have the tank depot um, under construction for Jibber. What are we seeing from our Ver player, um, Tightrope? Has he got any teching possible? <laughs> um, well, he's gone for the breakthrough battle group, but that doesn't... <laughs> he's he's unlocked the mechanized assault group. I've got to which see is... this. Yeah, he's unlocked it. He... It hasn't caught it in yet, but it could be on the cards. Wow! <laughs> okay, interesting. Uh, He's really going to need more Panzer Shreks, though, to deal with those Sherman tanks. Yeah, which will be emanating sh certainly soon. Oh, we've got three Pathfinders versus Jaeger in the south, in the centre. A little bit of heavy cover in the centre, and the uh, paratroopers and captain are enjoying that. Ah, oh, it's 2-2-1. Two, two, it's just kind of <laughs> worthless if it can't be fighting the quad. It's just no, no longer very effective, is it? Just, I want to just zoom in on the 2-2-1, two, two, and this is just it in a nutshell. Just chilling, not doing anything, looking picturesque, I guess. Oh, we've got an advance of infantry here. And we've got engineers laying mines on the flanks. That was a that was a satchel charge this time, hoping to cal catch Elpern. Um snapping there oh he's trying to bait him over some mines here oh it's so close it's just an m1 mine just a general purpose not the uh the ones the infantry can lay which i have been told to watch out for in this grand final yeah i'll turn myself up now i did actually keep, i always put tight rip a little bit louder than me but i think uh i've overestimated his quietness let's see Oh, 125 VPs Alpen. This is this is still looking tough. He's kind of stabilized, but that's probably just because we haven't seen a tank roll onto the field yet. We soon will. Sherman's on its way. He's also got 63 fuel after this one's hit the field, so he's going to have a, an armored cavalcade storming through Tunisian Pass very shortly. Did also upgrade his uh, grandees with the SMGs instead of going for another Panzer Shrek, which is a bit of a worry. Here he is. First M4A1. Of course, it's just going to have to stay as the A3 uh, variant for now, because there's not many options available to it, because he's gone for the infantry support center. Oh, 2 2 one has got to be careful. Sherman's rolling up. Infantry, get to cover! Yep, he's fighting hard. And the 2 2 1 with the Panzerbuchse is going to come in clutch now, Tightrope. I'm just promising you that. It's going to be like a <laughs> Yag Tiger. Do you know how much penetration it has? I, I actually don't. Uh, at least five. <laughs> at least. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. It is incredibly bad, yeah. Oh, he just oh. got a side hit! Look at that Sherman! In it, <laughs> trembling in its it treads. It must have a good pin. I, I'll, I'll look it up after this game's over. Yeah, get the attribute editor open. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's let's do a deep dive. I think uh, that should be your next video, actually. Mm. My next video is going to be about the changes to... How explosives work in this game compared to Company Heroes 2. Nice. Are they more explodey or less explodey? 
sectors is now uh, enemy I, you know, I'm gonna leave you guys in suspense. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Friends pushing coming. north for the fuel. Alpen's finally looking to get out. Meanwhile, here it is. It's paradroop reinforcements. Paradrop reinforcements, not droop. But the, the, the shoot's droop, at least. And that, of course, means you can reinforce whilst in combat, giving you between 11 and 14 reinforcements total now. And I think it can't do all squads simultaneously. Does that sound about right, Tightrope? I've got no idea. <laughs> Come on, you do! You probably did something on it, I'm sure. Well, I, I'm not... Yeah, you're right about the number of models. I think it can't just, like, spam all of the squads at the same time or something. I think it does them in turn. Maybe I've just made that up. Maybe I dreamt it. Meanwhile... Yeah, he's he dropped artillery on these Jaegers. They need to be careful there. Back in the north, M16's now climbed to its fifth infantry kill, and it's pounding on those grenadiers. Yeah, Alpine's just so desperate on the VPs. He's just again and again trying to push onto these points because it's drawing out so fast. Oh, Sherman's got that legendary Panzerbuchser 221 in its sights, but he gets away the MVP of Alpern's army survives for now. Oh, here comes the second Sherman, though, from the side. Yep, second Sherman. Watching on from the centre. Nearly takes out the legendary 2-2-1. The, two, two, the Shrek squads look to support. Well, this is a best of five grand final. If you think Alpern is going to quit the early and just get on to game two, you think again. He may be down to 68 victory points, but he wants to drain help, <laughs> drain Jibber as far as he can. Sadly for him, he's he got that young man stamina, you know? <laughs> he's, he's trying oh, to no. in this series. 2 2 1's got no stamina. It's been taken out. This is terrible. Oh, no. Where were you when the legendary 2 2 1 went down? It's a tragedy. It absolutely is. Honey Nuts was in his room eating toast. Fair enough. <laughs> we all know where we were. Uh, he's done a good job slowing the VP drain down a lot, Alpern, but what? where's the light at the end of the tunnel here? I, I don't see it. If these Jaegers get tapped by the Sherman, there's going to be no light at the end of the tunnel. Ah, he merged into them with the Grenadiers whilst they died. That's uh, that's play. It definitely is a, a play. He's gotten Jibber down to uh, 483 now. He definitely is playing for victory point drain. And that's all he's got to play for, really. Because there's no way he can come back in it, surely. Yeah, if, if he didn't spend all those points going into that mechanized assault group, he could probably have a Panzer IV command tank out by now, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Did he misclick or something? I'm not sure. Maybe Alpine stream viewers know the strategy and we're missing something. <laughs> Possibly. He does have some interesting takes on the game, Alpine. He is top five in the world for certain, but he does think outside the box, as does Jibber. And uh, through that, he often finds some of the best ways of playing for certain. But uh, also through that, it's very difficult to second-guess him as a caster. It doesn't necessarily follow the patterns you're used to seeing all of the time. Airborne in a spot of bother as this game is becoming a little bit linear and one-dimensional as they're just fighting for the victory points for now. Tracer rounds. Oh, are they fireflies? They're fireflies, not tracer rounds. Okay. That makes more sense. I was, I couldn't make out the difference there for a second tightrope. <laughs> Understandable. Enemy movement near victory point. One lot of repairs, though, required for Jibber at the moment. He's having to take a backward step. Only has one engineer, it looks like. Oh my god, he's got another Sherman, though. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, he's not upgrading any pintle mounts on the Shermans, interestingly. Saving his munitions for other purposes, clearly using a lot of the mortar support and, and stuff. But uh, yeah, doesn't seem to fancy that. Helper just won't die. He doesn't know when he's done for. We've got Pathfinder stopping the victory point cap in the north in the trollish way we're all used to seeing. 
think even the lowest casual players in the chat will have pulled that manoeuvre off at some point. Yes, somehow the map is looking quite Alpine favoured right now. Don't know how he's doing it. He just won't go away, will he? Let's check out Alpern's uh, composition for the stream. It's just Jaeger spam and a lot of fuel. Uh, okay. He's just about to come up to uh, Panzer IV command tank timing. And oh, I see. He can go for that right now if he wants to. Fair enough. Not anymore because he doesn't have the manpower, but <laughs> <laughs> that's just it. As soon as he gets back to base, he, he's going to yeah. struggle, isn't he? And his manpower income per minute is going to be quite low, I imagine. Oh, no, it's quite high, actually. His pop cap's only 54. Meanwhile, Jibber Chad is at 84. He's got to finish this game off now, surely. Yep. We're going to set up the triple cap here and the points train out so fast in Company Furious 3. Yeah, they do. It's a bit more snowball-y this game. I'm not necessarily sure that's a bad thing when the game gets balanced. Whilst it's relatively unbalanced and it's not very, uh, not got that much finesse, of course it will feel a bit worse, definitely. Alright, got two Shreks pushing in. And the Jaeger's watching on. The tank's back up. He's going for the victory points yet again. Ah, oh, it's an all-out assault. He's going to get the center, but might not be fast enough. Saw a shell bounce animation. That was quite tasty there on the shim. There we go. That's quite good. Well done, Co3. That doesn't look too bad. It must be the atmospheric settings of this particular map that make it look better. Oh, look at that, guys. It looks all right. Co3 is not as bad as everybody was saying all of a sudden. Meanwhile, in the north, Grenadiers are dead. Oh... GG. Yep. Alright guys, so I will try and balance me in tightrope. Um, we were contending with the map issues um, when we should have been doing audio testing before the game started, so sorry if it wasn't perfect. But uh, yeah, that game was a bit of uh, a disappointing game, would you say, tightrope? It was kind of just a steamroll from Jibber. Who expected that? Yeah, well, USF gets off to such a strong start. El Pino lost those, t was it two squads of Pioneers quite early on, and then he just didn't have the capping power to really stay in the match. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't the best. And uh, how many viewers? We've got 655 viewers watching live. A lot of people that don't usually get to watch these things because it is a bit later than we usually um, do them. But yeah, I just felt like Alpern's strat or Jibber's strat was too powerful. Maybe she had a bad start. And um, considering as well, Alpern had a lot more practice on that map than Jibber. Yeah, it was a very strong start for Jibber. You know, he's in a very good lead here. Um, yeah, nice one. Let's. Uh, yeah, I just I just wonder what Alpern was doing with their the tick down towards that you know two five one battle group call and thing. I'd... <laughs> Was he actually planning on getting that, or what, what was going on there? I don't know. You you had his UI up, though. So so talk us through what he did. and um, He teched down to the battle group. Yeah, there's like a call-in down the uh, left-hand side of the battle group. Oh, yeah, the one with the Stostrupen. Yeah, yeah Stostrupen. We never saw it. Maybe he's he was thinking of doing it. It might have been clutch on retreat, you know, just to zoom that thing on the map. But it's so situational. Yeah, well, I have played a little bit with that command tank as well and that's not the best either so <laughs> oh yeah i don't I, I don't know strange build yeah and the 
the 221 as well. I know it was not a big investment, but it was a psychological annoyance to Alpern, as, uh, uh, you know, possibly, you could say. Uh, the fact that he had it and it had no purpose, then... Uh... I mean, he kept the quad relatively honest, but... Mm. Yeah, not no real threat of actually killing it, I think, at any stage. Fair enough. Fair it's enough. A little, little bit too cumbersome to you know, go for those chase downs with it. Such an, a fixed position on its gun. Yeah, it's really unwieldy, isn't it? Even more so than some of the actual tank destroyers in the game, which are admittedly very difficult to control. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, could be, could be tricky. Let's say and that's what I mean. The fact that you're having to micro that is just an annoyance, you know. Um, yeah. Not that Alpern can't might pull that off, but you know what I mean. Right, let's um, get this stuff set up. Right, I'll go to 10 seconds this time, and I'll actually try and do that. Oh, I missed it. Okay, I'm at 12 seconds. <laughs> There's too much to think about. It's annoying. <laughs> we start with good intentions, and then we just mess it up, don't we, Tightrope? Yeah, poor, very poor man's mod at Echo. <laughs> okay, for some reason I can't launch this one. You, have you accidentally updated the map? Do you want to save over the map again? I un uh, I unsubscribed from it, so it shouldn't have happened. Thanks for the raid, hundred and first. Hope your stream went well, mate. 안녕하세요. There you go. It's not Ni Hao Pitch Slayer. <laughs> you can't just say Ni Hao for every Asian language. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> no, it's this one, the one I just played. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Or just... 안녕. 안녕. There you go. <laughs> no, it's this one. <laughs> Definitely not Ola. <laughs> yeah, Anyong. Yeah. How's it going, tightrope? Do you reckon it's going to work? Mm, can't seem to get it going. <laughs> well, let me uh, show you. Gonna have you to my... screen share. Yeah, good yeah. old screen share. Let's do that way. There you go, my friend. That should work. Now you have to put it with my camera. How about that? That'll be good. Yeah, I just can't get it going, unfortunately. Oh well. By the way, guys, I did make some very topical memes for um, the show. So if you have some, if you, I'm not suggesting you subscribe to me unless you have Amazon Prime. But we've got the plane bug gif. What do you think about that one, Tightrope? It's good, isn't it? Oh uh, no no no! Oh, thanks, Sledge. Oh yeah 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 okay yeah I understand yeah that's a good one that's a good meme. We've got the skill button. That was a good one. Did a lot of work on that. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Mm. Tasty num -nums. Uh, For a second, I thought that the plane was going to be like how it changes direction, you know? But no, it's like the replay bug. Yeah, it's the replay bug. It's only topical on oh, this one. This is actually a good emote. Like, the boys emote. The boys. The boys. There you go. That's pretty much build order. <laughs> That's the competitive build order for Brits. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's actually true. Yeah, exactly. All right, then, guys, now that um, we've got that out of the way, let's get over to game two and see if Alpern can have a better game than game one, which he certainly bloody needs. So let's make it happen. Hello there, and welcome to game two. You're looking at the mighty Jibber Jabber Jobbers. That's right. It's Wehrmacht, and he's up against Elpern's USF. I'm with Tightrope, and uh, Tightrope, what have you played of these factions, and uh, what what build are you tending to go for at the moment? Uh, I haven't played too much with Airborne as USF, if I'm honest. It feels, it felt kind of too cheap before when Pathfinders were too good, you know? I don't yeah. like to play those top-notch strategies, but... Yeah, I've, I've been, I suppose I'm a weasel man, you know, weasel by, <laughs> weasel by nature. I always had you down as a weasel man, I don't know why, sorry. 
<laughs> so you're a weasel man. And what are you fancying as Vermax? I watched a bit of your stream and I know you try and get the mega YouTube videos where you pull off an awesome met uh, non meta strat. But Yeah. What what are you what is what is it that you're going for as Vermax at the moment? I've I, well, I had a pretty good strategy with the, like, Jaegers, Wind into Panther. Like, the Panther is just so strong in the late game, it kind of just feels like an I win button. Mm. So, I feel like th that strategy is actually legit. Fair enough. No one believes me that Pyo spam is legit. Oh, look at that! He just did parkour! Did you see that parkour? Yeah. That was brilliant! <laughs> it was completely, like, inefficient use of his time. It's because he's got a Mohican. He's, he thinks he's a badass. I hate fellas who are all talk and no action. Listen up. It's the one at the back with a Mohican, definitely. Um, let's get some hype and chat. We've now got the underdog, Jibber, who's winning the series, which is surprising. Let's get a poll up. I want to see who you think will win this overall best of five. We've got Elpern, who's hit higher heights in tournament history, and Jibber, who's already 1-0 up. So it should be a remarkably fair um, poll, really. Let's see how you th how you feel. Well, uh, three rifles so far from Alpine, so it's a departure from what we saw last game, at least. Yeah. Area is ours. Certainly is so far. And let's check out Jibber. He's gone for an MG42, yet to see action. But it's an interesting choice, but it's a very good choice for this map because he can look at this huge rock formation and make sure it doesn't move on him. So that's a good idea. But if you know if you're what I'm saying, Tyrop, it's quite an open map. You could have some good positions for it, maybe here. Uh, maybe, like, behind this heavy cover here, perhaps? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe not in the centre so much, but yeah. around uh, the north and south area seems pretty good for the machine gun. Yeah, it looks alright, doesn't it? Let's see how that works. Oh, and what was he going for there? There's more paratroopers by the looks of things. As it is a battle group Terminator format today, ladies and gentlemen, meaning they can't play the same battle group more than once in the series. Let's see how that works out. Alpern here, he's getting some pounded on. He has, however, broke through tightrope and he's decapping the fuel there. In fact, they're all decapping everybody's things right now. It's best cast through bloody tap map at the moment. But a bit of a retreat push away, the rifle's just about surviving. Yeah, it's just, it's, they're all over the map at the moment. This cap and left, right, and centre. <laughs> this is good, good to see, though, you know? Nice to see a dynamic uh, game on this new map. Orange Pest in chat, the uh, master analyst of ML1, says if he'd seen the Falchion Pioneers dropping, he would have backtacked for Sniper and uh, cancelled his rifle. So he reckons that the uh, Falchion Pios have a little bit of an advantage against a rifle-based composition on this map. So let's see if he's right. I did see, uh, I did watch Elpin stream the other day. He was doing, uh, I think it was four or five rifles straight into the Easy 8 Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was basically the build. So uh, I want to see if that's what Alpine's going to go for in this particular match. Oh, it absolutely is. It, it absolutely is. Um, he did pre. I did ask him, have you got any secret strats lined up? And he said no. <laughs> so that means he's going to be doing the one he's been doing on stream. As no one has any territory. It's like a bloody disco ball out there. We do have these squads um, under duress of M1 Carbine. And then one Garantz rather as they're forced back to base. The snipe. The MG doesn't do very well. It's, it's the base MG that's working there. We're losing a fuel point. We're mm, looks like here. it's going to be safe on retreat, though. Nothing's going to get wiped here early. Oh, bars pop just Enemy off peak time the there. They could have been a little bit better time, but that's a good, strong attack for Elpern. As again, USF are rampaging in this second grand final of Coming Heroes 3. Um, they were the story of... ML1, and they're still here at the moment in a point of pride. Well. 
Yeah, yeah, those of VQs are just annoying, aren't they? They are. Still, I, oh, I, I've remembered all the way through this tournament to turn event queues off. I wait for the grand final when I've got more viewers on YouTube by an ordinance of like five times and I mess up. Oh well. Here we go. We've got the MG set up. The Falsh Empire's trying to make a nuisance of themselves. How does he get out of this tightrope? Yeah, it's uh, not looking so good. He's popping that ability, probably looking for the suppression there as well. i to rely on this MG42 to do the heavy lifting at the moment because these bar riflemen are just dominating the map. Yeah, we could have done with a wipe there. Had very little health remaining. He got 45, I suppose. Not that little. But um, yeah, could have been more health. He's got the Falsham Jaegers now, though, tightrope. This will give him a bit more oomph against the bars. Yeah, this is it. When he can start to fight back a lot more effectively, especially before the... Right when get their second bars upgraded. One of our so he did does have the munition supply upgrade, I believe, which reduces the cost, I'm gonna to say, to 30 munitions of the bars. Is that right, Tightrope? Something like that? <laughs> yes, it, it oh. just showed on screen, yep. I'm not exactly sure, I've never does. used it. I don't get a chance to bloody play. <laughs> yeah, these, you know. these tournaments are coming too uh, I'm doing one a month, so I, I don't actually get to play Co3 anymore. It's terrible. Anyway. <laughs> Understandable. Very bad for my stream that I don't know to be fair. Right. So the riflemen are now popping their second bar here. They're going to get behind the heavy cover. They're going to be in a really strong position. Meanwhile, in the center, Jibber's just pensively waiting with his MG. Yeah, slowly breaking through here, making some uh, headway. Has gone up to the uh, fifth rifle after the captain, I believe. So oh. it looks like maybe we're in for a easy eight stall here from Alpin. He's going to go straight for it. That may give, just may give Jibber the uh, wiggling room he needs to be able to counter. Captain's not going to have any wiggling room left because he's going to be very dead. How did he survive that? Fifteen health remaining. Yeah, Meanwhile, very Pioneer. Close call. It survives Ooh. just about, yeah, low health there. The boys quite interesting that he went for the uh, flame upgrade on that, considering he doesn't have green to like merge into it to keep it alive. So maybe you go for like a grenade launcher, you know? Ooh, dropped yeah. a bar though, that's Squad nice. goes down there. He's dropped a bar. Nice satchel from Jibber. He tempted him in. That was, t that was a... Full rifle wipe. Look at the body strewn in the creek. Nice work by Jebber. He also can pick up the uh, Browning at some point. And Elpern, ever the sportsman. Well played, well played. The only reason I didn't screech into the microphone there is because the, the scout icon was covering the rifle icon. Because the icons are really big in Co3. So I didn't actually work out what happened as it was happening. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, I would have gone. Actually. Oh, oh no, he's had a big slow here. He's running in slow motion. He's stuck in the creek. He's very, very done for. This is at times one speed, and he's dead. Oh, Jibber is racing back into game two. This had genuinely has comeback potential written all over it now. Wow, two squad wipes just like that. I know that Alpen can generally be a bit more flexible with squad wipes since you get a rifleman on top of the easy eight, but not two like that. I don't want to pick up the bar. No, that was not good. The stall to easy eight dream is coming to an end, it would seem. He does have a very, very powerful captain and retinue at the moment, and he's still pushing. But, uh, I mean, Alpen surely has to make something... Oh, sorry, Jibber has to stop this push now and start to put his jackboot down. Yeah, more Falsham Jaeger. It looks like he's just going to go straight for a Panzer IV, so he's going to save up a lot of fuel to make that work. Yep. Falsham Jaegers can be good, especially when they've got uh, Jaeger support, but in this case, he's going for the, those Falsham Pios. Right, we've still got that pole open. I'm interested in how it's going. 
It's uh, 56 people. 56 percent of people think Elpern's going to win this series, despite Jibber currently dominating. Um, that just goes to show just how the standing of the two players is perceived by the community. Oh, he's not falling for it this time. <laughs> he's awake. He's awake. Just about. Did get a reboot on one of those uh, lost rifles. I always feel it's a bit dangerous to do that when you... Oh, it's very dangerous when your scout squad's dead as well. That's a third squad wipe now in as many minutes. Jibber is on top of this game for certain. Oh, grenade and a bit of a block, I think. He is running in. Jibber's trying to bait, though, because he's got a couple of squads working their way into the retreat path of that rifle. Great call there, tightrope. Kim. Uh, extend it for as long as possible. Ah! Here he comes. Yeah, this is called a soft retreat for you new guys. You have to manipulate that retreat algorithm in your favor. Unfortunately, Relic uh, didn't give me any opportunity to do any of those intermediate tips, tightrope. It's all tightrope and tightrope and tightrope on them ones. I think Alpern made some, didn't he? Yeah, and Alpern and Stormless. No way. To be honest. My tips probably would have been really bad. Ah, oh, no, you, you got something to say. No, they would have like seen me try recommend tilting the camera and then just cancelled the contract, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Sweep mines with your face for, to make sure they're swept. Pretty even split on the map at the moment. All things considered, you know, with so many squad wipes against Alpern, he's still holding on to a good chunk of it. Big shout out, by the way, to Alpern there. He was quicker than the MG Traverse when he saw the MG's position. He was able to duck behind the rock before he uh, could come unstuck. He's behind heavy cover up here. He's battling against the elite paratroopers of the German vanguard there. Yeah, he doesn't have a big vet advantage on his rifleman either. You know, he's kind of fighting vet one versus vet one. So there's a bit of a struggle against Falschenjäger at the moment. Yeah. Struggle he will. Fight he must. As the Falschenjägers negate the cover and are certainly going to force them away. That's an M6 heavy anti-tank mine here, by the way. So this is part of the demolitions package for Infantry Support Centre. Doesn't just give them demos, it gives them... Teller mines or the equivalents. Yeah, those two <laughs> big damage. I think they do a heavy engine crit as well, so they're very strong. It's going to be epic to see them if they hit a Panzer IV this game. Certainly will make a series of it for certain. Oh, he's gone for a Stug. Oh, grenade. <laughs> he's just ignoring it now. It deletes his own heavy cover. But does give way to a Stug who hits. There it is. The anti there was a heavy anti-tank man behind that rock. Stug's hit it. And he's he's a very poorly Stug now. There's heavy engine damage. One of our is now in How much health was that? 400? Yes. Exactly 400. He has so got two anti tank grenades. Would have he decided to get on top of it instead of repairing it. This is very, <laughs> very unusual from Jibber. Just repair it, mate. You don't have to get on top of it. Honestly, this guy's mad. He's just bonkers. He does weird things like this sometimes. <laughs> he doesn't. Oh, he does have a sweeper, but it's down at the bottom. Okay. So he's going to have to watch out for those mines for sure. He really is. Yeah, he's going to have to be careful. You'll have to lead it's a the fast way. Repair. Bloody is, isn't it? Look how much his health's going up by look at that. Sector lost. No contact. <laughs> it's racing ahead. Oh, yeah, that's that's fast for this game. Maybe those Falsh Empire have a very good repair rate. I haven't looked into that. Uh yeah, must do. I tell you what, that's another loss for Elpern now. Because these heavy anti-tap mines, he's aware they exist. And um he's got away Scott Free having hit one. And he managed to get on top of the tank instead of repairing it. So all in all, that's a big win for a big incidental win for your man from the Netherlands.
have had a lock into the battle group now for Alpern. Victory point has fallen into enemy control. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All in the battle group, there you go. Okay, Are we going for that easy eight storm? Three or well, just under three command points required still. Hasn't saved up that much manpower for it though. Saw him the other day, he had about 1200 manpower at this stage. Uh, had, with all those squad wipes and rebuilds, he could not afford to save that much so far. Let's uh, check out Jibber's position at the moment. He's dodging with a plum. He's got the standard He's got upgrades, that. infantry reserves, yeah. Yeah, went for that instead of uh, the whirlwind call. Basically like the British one, isn't it, for the uh, Indian artillery kind of thing? Yeah. Pretty much the same. Reports of enemy movement near our victory point. Except the tool tips correct this time. So that's two stugs now. Oh there you go. Look at the anti-infantry damage these uh, tank hunting infantry support guns can are doing. Yeah, that machine gun upgrade working well. Oh, this isn't working well. Oh no, let's look at the health on these guys. They're at 67. They're at 53. They're at 50 between three. Oh my god, that dropped quickly. Oh dear, there's one man left. Who's on the retreat path? Anybody? Oh, a lucky escape if there ever was one. Yeah, I cannot afford yet another squad wipe help here. Stoke Battle Group is going to roll over a mine. Oh, it's a shoe mine. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, God. <laughs> I think most of the mines do have the same, like, visual cue, right? So yeah. it can be hard to tell the difference between each player's mines. Oh, that was great covering for your co-caster there, Tightrope. Whatever I'm paying you, no, it's not I, enough. I, so I actually swept my own mine the other day because <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference. You can sweep your own mines. I didn't even know that was possible. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Competitive gaming. Well, here we go. We've got the uh, Devil's Brigade uh, pre-order bonus, which you can still buy. They've captured a victory point. Devils. There you go. That was when we used to like the skins. <laughs> oh no, this is a oh, real one course. this time, and he's really, really far into enemy territory. He's again got 400 health damage. Of course he has. And is there any? sign of anything coming no he's one command point away from at we must pull this back. We're yeah i think he's going to get that repaired up in time before the easy eight arrives unfortunately for alpern he could have done with a kill there look at the repair rate on these he doesn't even need anything else it's so fast he's going to be fine down here but yeah he's pulling up an mg as well it's so fast alpern with a strategy I have to say that just hasn't really worked for me because there's no follow-up to these bloody AT mines surely that proves the strategy isn't the best one going what do you think Tyro? Uh, yeah well I think it's just you know all on the easy eight storm and he's just going to be banking on that make to make the big comeback but a bit of a uh, base inspection action he's going for the kill on the mid tent now uh, you can't kill the medics but you can kill their tents Oh, he killed the medics! Everybody, he killed the medics. Tell Geneva. Relic is, uh, that Kothri is no longer available in Switzerland. <laughs> Get it ripped off the Steam Shore. It's illegal. I'm cancelling Relic. Tell Relic they've been cancelled, please. Oh, a bit of a close call on that rifle. Oh, you're sorry. It's a machine bad. gun. Uh, Yes, it was a very close call, and he jumped up the rock to survival. Meanwhile, in the north... Oh, he's got the uh, easy eight. Here oh, it comes. Here it comes, side hits the first hit, and the other Stug's facing the wrong way. This is a very bad situation to be in. Oh, but what a shot there on the Fausting possible Falschemjäger. God damn it, a captain's been killed. Oh, and a captain yep. just died elsewhere. Oh, dear. Oh. Remember, Alpern doesn't have any repairs either for this easy head, I think, so he's got to be careful <laughs> with his health right at the start. A point is under oh, no. 
I mean, the Easy 8, by the way, is an absolute monster. It's everything the Tiger wishes it was, in my opinion. Probably one of the best tanks in the game by far. But it's just got too much work to do, surely. Yeah, well, if any tank can do it, it's going to be the Easy 8. Look and Alpin still 250 VPs. You know, he's got, he's got some time to work with here, honestly. Yeah. Don't forget, every time he calls this Easy 8 in, he gets um, another squad of riflemen. It's uh, 800 manpower, though, which is a hell of a lot. <laughs> it's all part of the strategy, you know, those squad losses? Plant. <laughs> you just need to free up some, uh, you know, manpower for uh, the corn. Got three Stugs versus Sherman. This is very, very, very Co-1. Uh, the early days of Co-1. It was basically rush to Sherman, rush to Stug. Infantry uh, was Rifleman. I mean, there's a bit more, too much infantry here for them, for this to be real OG Co-1 style. But go check out any um, original um, Co-1 casts, like Hall of Fame casts from Green Replays guys on, on YouTube. Some uh, I myself covered a few. I think there was another guy covering a few. Um, basically, it was Rush to Stug and Rush to Sherman. <laughs> and here we are, 17 years later. <laughs> has Alpern rebuilt his uh, mid tent? Has he? No. Has he? No. So all these squads are very low on health. Especially Derek. We still have no repairs either for that easy eight. Okay. Well. <laughs> it's like watching America. Look, because it's like the desert. It looks like we're watching Native Americans, but like if they'd gotten guns. This is what all It's a very those... tactical movement out to the uh, that side of the map. Ah, yes. Guess they're going to go into the water together. And meanwhile in the centre, oh, the Easy 8's been hit in the rear, needs to get out of there, double Faust possible, Ooh. he's got it perhaps, oh no, out what of range, the Faust? out of range. I saw the Faust in the man's hand, what yeah, happened? Yeah, but he got out of range, it's Co 3, baby. Well, I, I don't know what happened there, but... It's Co 3, I'm telling you, it's not Co 2, it doesn't work like yeah. that anymore. It's the, oh, this is what they wanted? They didn't want it to, uh, if you lock it, it goes, I think you have to, I don't know, apply for a Faust before you can fire one. Oh, what's he doing here? He's trying to come around the rear, but, oh, the planes. Yep. Easy 8 now on one shot, it looks like Double Stug's chasing in, looking for the kill. This is all that she wrote. Surely the Sherman can't survive. He's revealed himself, he shouldn't have. He's dead now. Well, no, he's still going. He's still going, Tightrope. He's dead. Ah, the planes, eh? You can Good always rely on those. I thought the best analogy for them the other day, Tightrope. Do you want the, the analogy? Sure. Do you know when you're a kid and you're playing with, like, models or toys and you're a little bit older than maybe your brother or your friend or whatever and he doesn't play realistically enough? Well, the planes look like they're being controlled by an eight-year-old. You know, like, meow. Oh, uh, yes. I was actually just thinking about that yesterday. Were you really? Like, the exact same thought. It's like, <laughs> it's like this eight year old's got his joking. clammy, grubby hands on your pristine die cast model. And he's like playing with it and it annoys you. It's like, mate, you're not playing realistically enough. It doesn't fly like that. That's the analogy. <laughs> yeah. He, like, he runs out of arm length and then he just has to like pull it back, you know? <laughs> yeah, his chubby little arm. It's not long enough. Yeah, exactly. Oh. No, the comeback's not real. It's not going to happen. He does it. He just planted two mines right in the middle there, Alpern. So he? he's he's kind of close to another easy eight. I, I could see something happening. Where are these mines? You say the middle. They're in the, right there in the river. In the to the river. north of the VP. Oh, okay, I'll check that out in a second. A is famously blind to mines. And these riflemen are blind to life right now. They jump on the rock. Looks like they may escape, but the Stug army's coming in. Oh no, the Stugs are all-terrain vehicles, and all death for the riflemen. Yeah, there's uh, machine gun upgrades on the Stugs, working well there. He's gone for uh, no auto reinforce, he's trying to hide around the corner, waiting for the miracle move of this Easy 8. Can it save the day? Oh, he's been seen. He's been seen. Go for annihilation victory. 
where Steiner's easy eight. It's here. He's crewed by Brad Pitt. He's going into hell down mode. Is he gonna just fully go for this annihilation one? It might do. It might be his end though. If he exposes all that rear armor to one easy eight boy, it could actually be his his demise. To be honest, he needs to be a bit careful there. Yeah, he sensed that the calculations were off. He could have thrown the game in a horrific fashion. He's hauled down in one of them. Easy 8 is just an absolute god. It's hiding behind Tabletop Mountain. And it's going to do some really good work here. Maybe he can get away with this other Easy 8. But here we go. We've got the... No, he hasn't got enough munitions for sticky bombs. He will in about five seconds' time. He killed one of these strokes. But... Yep, one down. Mm -hmm. A little bit of peekaboo from this, but oh, here comes he got, the pack. Yeah, clutch pack to the rescue, but the, the riflemen have him in their sights now. Stooks is still going for the headquarters building, but they have now been <laughs> stickied. Engine damage. Meanwhile, it's pack, but here come the Falsham Jaegers. They're going to eviscerate the riflemen. The Sherman's still trying to pit flick away at the Stooks. GG well played from Alpern. He knew it was getting all a bit too silly, but uh, what a nice last ga gasp defense there. Peak gaming tightrope. Absolutely peak. This is what it looks like. Oh, that was a pretty exciting finish. Wasn't exciting for this guy. Well, we never saw this in Company Viewers 2. <laughs> Triple Strug <laughs> base rush going for the Annihilation victory. No, that was awesome. That was awesome. And to be honest, I did actually want to see a little bit more of this um, in Co3, so I'm kind of happy about base rushes being back on the menu, boys. Because uh, it's always exciting when they go for it, because it can go horrifically wrong. <laughs> like, we nearly saw it happen to Elpern there. This dog for had seven health remaining, but um, Elpern seeing his Sherman um, and his all his riflemen dead, literally all of them, except, well, not literally, because, well, this guy was soon to die. He felt he needed to throw in the towel, but yeah, other than that, GG. Yeah, 700 viewers, not bad, not bad. It's uh, a third of what we were getting for the last tournament, but that's to be expected because uh, the attrition rates in the community have been rather massive uh, after a launch, obviously. Yeah. Um, 800 man power is a, a re reaction to how massively overpowered they were at one point in time, Fnatic. As everybody knows, call-ins are so difficult to balance. Um, I have a solution for that. You don't have call-ins in the first place. But now we've got them, we've just got to wait for them to be balanced. Which is going to take... How long did it take Code 2 to call-ins to finally be balanced tightrope? Oh, man. The, like the the very last stage, like we're heavy tanks. I think getting on, yeah, that <laughs> must have been like twenty eight, nineteen, maybe. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So was that like six years, seven years? Even then, I still think like there was some call. It was still the Valentine that was probably yeah. actually happening around then as well. So yeah, I suppose uh, maybe even twenty twenty. Yeah, Colin Ostrupen. Yeah, Valentine. I think Valentine was the last call-in vehicle. Ostrupen was the last call-in. Aren't Pathfinder's call-ins? Yeah. So the, the game is still blighted a, by uh, call-ins to this they day. They start on like a 50-second like a cooldown. So, that, you know, it's kind of got like a build time almost built in at the start of the <laughs> match, at least. JLIs. Yeah, call-ins aren't bad for infantry. I'll give them that. But they're call-in vehicles. Yeah, it's, it's the tech skipping call-ins that are so difficult to balance because, you know, you have to have more than, like, whatever the final tech building costs in terms of fuel, maybe in this game it's about 120 of an advantage for the call-ins to no longer kind of make sense, you know? Mm, mm, absolutely. So the price of that first Easy 8 call-in is kind of the price of the tank and the tank depot kind of, like, combined so in that regard you're kind of getting like this rifleman or like 
at least for the first call-in. Yeah. For like, you know, 100 manpower or something, like a really big discount. Um, Tightrope, do you agree with my... I had a We had a vote when we were having like a breakdown of Co3 earlier. We basically said, uh, do you think uh, Company Heroes 3 multiplayer will ever be great? And the vote was, uh, yes, it already is. No, it'll take two years to get great. And no, it'll take more than two years to get great. And my the chat here with like 500 people, they all voted that, yes, it will be great in time, but it's going to take around two years. Uh, what do you say to that, Tyrant? Do you think that sounds about right? Yeah, I could, I could see it taking about two years. Mm. It's, it's brutal, isn't it? <laughs> we wait like five years for Co3, and then we're like, just two more years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if they... I think especially if they add some more maps, yeah. uh, you know, the team game guys will be happy, especially like those, you know, only having two maps. It's crazy. For the big team modes is, is tough. I don't know why and, they do that, because that's so anti-making money, surely. Yeah, I don't, I don't. <laughs> But yeah, I think that will go a long way, like a, a few new maps. Yeah, absolutely. I will point out, like, Co2 did launch in a worse state than Co3, but I don't think that yeah. excuses the launch of Co3. It should have been a little bit better than this. Uh, quite a bit better, actually. But the, the worst problem has been the speed of the updates, but we're really expecting a balance patch sh soon, surely. A big one, Tightrope. Come on. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Come on, we've got to get a big one. Not just, I don't want a hot fix. I want a balance patch. They can... Ah, <laughs> a very important distinction that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I'm at how many seconds should I be at? Going to cast from Alpern's perspective, yeah, and I'm at twelve seconds. So yeah. All right, I'm at twelve now. Good man, good man. So let's um, let's get into this in one second. I'm just gonna get grab a beer, um, my only beer of the cast. So hang on a second. Right then. Oh, you ready, Mr. Rope? Yes, I'm ready. Good man, let's do it. Hello there. And willkommen. We've got Weasel by name and by nature. For the mighty jibber. Tightrope, does this make you a happy Kiwi right now? Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of the Weasel. And I think that's the best voice line of the game, right? It's by far the best voice line of the game. It's it's like so, not even close. They they managed yeah, yeah. <laughs> They tracked down like the last Co one dev that was alive or something, found them like in the sewer system of Vancouver and said, We just need one voice line. Please give us one. Uh, weasel by name, weasel by nature. And that was the last words they said. And they scribbled it down and they managed to get into Co3. That's how that worked. We are ready. The ball is finished. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a good thing. That, uh, it's, it's a very cool vehicle, I'd say. It is. Talk it's slow as well for how small it is. Talk about its abilities for us, if you will. What? Well, uh, yeah, at the moment it can not deploy crewable weapons, uh, they're bugged, but usually it can uh, for munitions cost. So you can get some very cheap team weapons from it. Usually most players go for the Vet 1 healing ability, 
and that means kind of just park it back at your base and use it as ambulances. Quite, it's kind of slow on healing if it won, but you know saves you a lot of fuel, so it's a nice economy boost in the early stages of the game. Nice. That was probably the best weasel recap I've ever heard. Um, of course, Jibber is going for rifles at the moment. Part of his uh, doctrine here is going to be an interesting one. Special operations does give way to the SSF commandos, which are quite useful. Um, but it's just a nice... You don't really see the whiz bang very much, do we? And that's a bit of a shame, I suppose. Yeah, well, I mean, it's all right. A bit short range, but can work i think the problem at the moment is not many players are using a whole bunch of team weapons so it's not a really good opportunity to just absolutely nuke them updated the scores now because of course jibber the allies player as the special operations usf is two nil up in this best of five series and he's got his upgrade it's a pintle mounted 30 cal and this Pioneer could be very dead very shortly if he's not too careful. <laughs> yeah, he really pushed that retreat to the last second. He did. Alpern has got to fight harder. Um, because uh, he's up against it here. There were conspiracy theories. He's just trying to drain Jibber's mana for this game. But look at this. He's absolutely dropping in on this cutoff. And here it comes from the side. The Weasel. Pushing all kinds of pressure down on these grenadiers. You have to V1 already. Wow. But this is just so tough for Wehrmacht in the early game. You know, the riflemen just bully the grenadiers so hard, especially in these close quarters fights. It's kind of like a what can you do situation, you know? Just make the most of what you got. That's all you can do. Alpern's down on his fortune in this third game of this best of five. He's 2-0 down. He's had a terrible start to game three. Could this be a 3-0 whitewash for Jibber at this rate? That would be a real shame to see. Would be. Especially because I told Tightrope I'd pay him by game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. <laughs> Go, Jibber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know it did this. Look at that. That's where all the animation budget went. Look at that. Territory That's cool, man. Go, Luftwaffe Company. They made some Jaegers. Yep, this is the turning point sometimes. Can be. They're the life support system of the Wehrmachts at the moment, the Jaegers. They're not even the crutch. They're full on keeping them alive. No bars being ticked yet. Actually, uh, maybe Chiba is a bit late getting a support centre down. <laughs> Might have missed his tech timing a touch. Um, inverse with a very funny comment in chat. Grenz of a Fausting and getting turned into Jaegers. He's nearly right. They also build sandbags and barbed wire before they get turned into Jaegers. <laughs> but yeah, that's about right. They're merging. Merging, merging you know, as well. Merging. Yeah. They have four yeah. things. But other than that, what are they good for? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He's having to push around the sides here because he's getting bullied by these rifles all over the place. He's finally landed some Falschimjägers, though. This could, again, give the uh, the Wehrmacht player the punching power he needs. Certainly help Jibber in game two. That roof is very powerful. It gives you the elevation bonus, so... Uh, good position for those Jägers before. Yeah, it's worth pointing out um, that this building is more powerful than the central Kasbah because the units are more inclined to go onto the roof. And get the bonus. <laughs> Build yeah. Crazy how the buildings work in this game. Well, uh, triple cap though, running against Alpern at this stage. He's got to be careful he doesn't drain out as fast as he did in game one. Mm. Yeah, he's got to be really careful because this grand final deserves it. We may have had some incredible series of the in this tournament tightrope. Many. But uh, YouTube viewers, they just tune in for that big grand final. 
and uh, sometimes it can be a bit underwhelming. Maybe this could be the case today. It's going to be the mechanized support center and the tech for Jibber. He's got that weasel ambulance back at base. It's worth pointing out, everybody, that um, the players can only go one battle group once in this game. Each battle group once, rather. And uh, this is the second time we've seen Luftwaffe, but it's the last time we'll see it today because uh, Alberth Alpern and Jibber have gone for it now. I'm touch surprised we haven't seen any uh, deck so far. Same. Well, I do believe in the schools of thought, which I privately think are incorrect. Um, some players currently think that Wehrmacht are like unbeatable all of a sudden and they're the best faction. Well, I still think Dak are better than Wehrmacht and that maybe I'm just wrong, I don't know, but I just get the sense they're better. Watching the Orange Pest Inca series earlier kind of made me think how bloody powerful they are, maybe. Mm. We have Falsche Amiga ready for orders. North Grenz in a human centipede-like formation running back to base with their little logs on their backs. Like Death Stranding, every single one of them. Two squads of Falschimega, they're starting to fight back quite effectively now. Oh, there's a tank depot down already from Jebba. Oh my, <laughs> this is going to be a world record Sherman timing. What's his fuel at after he gets that? It's going to be around 50. Okay. So, you know, about a minute and a half, maybe. Wow, he's sprinting towards that. And we've only got one Panzer Shrek on this Jaeger. He needed to go double Falsham, um, Falsham Jaegers because, um, of course, he's getting barred out of his face at the moment by the rifles. Or just out-rifled, I suppose. No bars, just rifles. The enemy has taken a victory point. So he had to to get the FG, the Falsham Jaeger Gewehrs um, out. It's one of the best battle rifles in uh, in history. Oh wow, he deployed some commandos. Okay. Oh nice. Sector now under enemy control. Find Good timing for Alpern to harass the uh, fuel as well, right as Jibbo is, you know, on the precipice of getting a tank out. Every bit of harass here counts. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's going to go for the plus 10 fuel immediately and keep the pressure up for now. Jibber has um, gone down this right side. Maybe he'll get something else up. Maybe air resupply operation is quite popular. Here comes the blob, though. One of these rifles has to be careful to get inside this crater. Getting really close. There they go. They've been forced away. That was not surprising. Yeah, you got to watch out for those grenades on retreat. Oh, the timely retreat there. Jibber, he's um, doing well today. A lot of his tactics have been good. A lot of his timing yeah, has been a good, good too. There's a good split on his rifles. That the other squad ran to the cutoff while the blob was chasing down the... Uh, Retreating squad. Yeah, that's what I was nice appreciating. Move. I think it was a really nice move. He was calm under pressure, and it just felt yeah. like, I don't know, his timing and lucidity was on form. It was great. You can tell we're proper uh, company here as competitive geeks type rope. We're in a very niche club because we get excited over little stupid things like that. You know what I mean? Wow. We... Well, I think most players wouldn't have done that they would have probably just retreated with both riflemen and then you know way more resources for the opponent i suppose we get excited because it makes our rts look like a competitive rts just for station. a brief moment oh and that's uh us mine <laughs> yeah you gotta double check them all <laughs> Would you say Alpern has possibly stabilized here? Up until the point that Sherman hits, obviously. <laughs> yeah, Sherman about three quarters complete on construction, so... Uh, oh, no. Maybe not for so long. It's right behind that heavy cover. The commandos didn't fancy it. 
weasel. Being very dastardly by nature, but my no, he's not going to roll over a shoe mine. He's definitely not going to want to tango with this Arctic Tundra specialist Panzer Shrek squad. Good uniform for the desert. Yeah, it's good. You want to be as uh, warm as possible in Tunisia. Point is under enemy control. Oh, Michael Bay Sherman. Oh, he does have... Yeah, he's got two uh, Shreks at least in a pretty relevant position. So, slow start for Jibber on that Sherman. Yeah, look at this army now from Elpern. This, by the way, is the reason that the highest level players are scared of Vermat at the moment, Tightrope. Allegedly, it's the death ball of Jaegers and Falchion Jaegers. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, while well, juicy mine goes off there. Jaegers chasing down that Sherman. Yep, good call. They're being burnt alive for their sins, though. They don't want to keep pushing too much. They're going to do some more health damage, though. There you go, side hit, but then a miss. That's a bad roll. Oh! He jumped. Bloody hell, Tyro. So it seems like Elpen was able to summon enough Shreks in time to uh, stay in this game well and truly. Yeah, well, the Sherman was kind of missing every shot with his main gun, so the Shreks were not taking very much bleed. But yeah, since those Falschenjäger have the Faust as well, you do have to be on your toes with these tanks. Yeah. They don't have a Faust, actually. The... Oh, the Falsham Jaeger have the Faust. Falsham Sorry, Jaeger. yeah, yeah, my yeah, my bad. Yeah. I'm getting yeah. Jaeger out of my mind at the moment. There's too many people yeah. hunting. Yeah, there's a lot of Jaegers. <laughs> I knew not to doubt Tyrone. I sounded stupid as soon as I spoke there. Anyway, we've got uh, SSF commandos going toe-to-toe. -to -toe and winning, of course they do. Good amount of map control now, though, for Alpin. Not looking bad, is it? Not looking bad at all. And he's he's got his Panzer Company coming up out the back there as well. Considering as well, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven main lines. He's still at 218 pop cap per minute. Ooh. Oh, the weasel. Oh, he got away with it. He weaseled out of that situation tightrope somehow. Oof, that was really close. Because he needs that for the healing. He actually needs that weasel. Oh no, he doesn't. He's got a mid tint. Okay. No, he's still he what I just the see. weasel. That weasel's been instrumental in keeping this manpower point in the north occupied. <laughs> right, elsewhere, another mine detonated here for riflemen. I think the mines have been a thorn in Jibber's side. Elpen's been really, uh, really good at continuing to plant them with his two pioneers. The advantage is ours! Is taking bars now, so we'll start to fight back a lot more effectively against these Axis units. Point. He's gonna have to, because he's gonna get outblobbed at this rate. Tank hunters are in town. And what's this tank doing? He's backing himself up into the edge of the map. Should be fine, but we can't be certain at the moment. I believe he does have the improvised armor upgrade at this stage, ah. Jibber, which I think drops the Shrek damage from 160 to 100 on these Shermans. Nice. Let's just go over and uh, have a look at that then. Yep, improvised armor, no further upgrades. He hasn't. He's gone that before 76 mil conversion, so Jibber showing some deep game knowledge there for us. Lovely stuff. What's your opinion on all these universal global upgrades in this side tech building so far, Tightrope? Do you like it or do you think it's a bit too much? No, I mean, it seemed quite tough to balance. Some of them are OP, some of them are useless. <laughs> <laughs> that pioneers are useless. The received accuracy on those things is devastatingly bad for them. 
Yeah, double bars on all of these rifles now, so they are powerful. They are, they certainly are. There's a mine behind these squads, but they're going to have to prioritise this heavy cover. Falsham Jaegers, oh dear, oh dear. They're being destroyed on retreat. Look at the health dissipate. 21, 13, 0. They're down and out. Yeah, he just popped the suppression ability on all four of those riflemen at once. Oh. Quite comical. It's kind of blob v blob at the moment, but it seems like uh, Alpin is close to his base. He ends up prevailing. Ah, oh, I see you've, re you've uh, read the tagline for Co3. It's on the back of the uh, box, I think. Blob v blob. Who will reign victorious in the sand? <laughs> and one mine this time suppressing if not killing as many as he'd want he's attack grounding at max range I think with the Sherman will do something funky with it um, meanwhile Grens are going to prioritise in the south the weasel makes its presence felt for its sixth kill incoming oh no it's going to get fausted run weasel oh yeah, no not the weasel. Let's just focus on the weasel, guys. Nothing else matters. Just like Kirk Emmett said. Oh, oh, no. So sad. Throw a coin to your weasel driver. Well, we got a Panzer IV on the field now for Alpin. Is this the turning point? Could be. It's a four with its Arctic camo. Quite well suited to the desert, actually. Goes in. Commandos pushed away. Sherman's outclassed for now. Will he get the 76 mil upgrade, you reckon? Hard to say. He, you know, he did take a bit of a sideways step going for those improvised armor and bars. Just slowed him down a bit on the armor front. Mm. Does have, you know, marked vehicle available in special operations, Jibber, so can help in the uh, armoured fights. Oh, there we go, we've got Jibber positioning on the, the retreat side of these riflemen. Pursues, and he's going to hold the line around about now, maybe? No, no receive. Yeah, doesn't need it. The enemy has claimed our sector. Oh, big shot there. Why do you retreat from this rifle, I think? A yeah, big Jaeger blob in the retreat path as well. But the Panzer IV is not chasing. Okay, should be alright. Should be. He's getting, yeah, he's focusing the Sherman, second built Sherman now. Double bazooka hits with 25% health da um, reduction, apparently. So that was still pretty meaty. Imagine if he didn't have cope cages. They still have 250 points left. We must yeah, he popped the uh, HE rounds there on the Sherman, but he just couldn't get a good hit on the Jaegers. Seems to be uh, a bit of an issue for Jiva. Oh no, this is trouble. Sherman side armor. We have territory cut off from supply. Defending with the planes. Skill planes are incoming. These ones actually do require some skill. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As you saw, they actually miss, so, you know. Oh, okay. oh it's a drag drag build ability, not a click ability. I wish they were all yep. like that, to be honest. Right, Rifleman in a bit of peril, but again, yep. As one um, chat member put it, Jibber does indeed have a shamrock in one of his cavities. <laughs> Well, I think we've got a proper game on our hands with this one. It seems to be very evenly matched right now. It's close on the victory points as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. 299 to 232. Decent army sizes as well. 67 pop cap before this second Panzer IV hits. And Jibber again, 65 pop cap with a third Sherman. No, that's, no, no, that's the Panzer IV. So yeah, they're going to have very similar armies, very similar pop cap. We've got a game on our hands. This could go either way, ladies and germs. This is where that, you know, 25% reinforced cost bonus really starts kicking in for Alpen and starts to accelerate away in terms of manpower. Yep. 
quite simply, Jibber's going to have to outkill him by 25% to keep up. Oh, hold down, but for some reason you can pop in and out of it instantaneously. Of course it would be better if it had a penalty to it. These planes are just not even getting close. I'm surprised he went for that instead of the uh, Mark vehicle. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, all down at the wrong moment. What is he doing here? Or has he? So he a four. Bait? Maybe a bait? Yep. Especially with the Shreks. Maybe it was a bait. It could have been a genius stroke by Alpern. He's going in here for the kill. He gets oh, it. No. And we've also had a, a Faust off from the Falschermegers on this other Sherman. Panzer IV goes in. Oh, this is a disastrous for Jibber. How poorly that went for him. Oh, he's Doesn't a jump have scare. Tank grenades either. Here's your jump scare. It's dead. I think that might just be the GG move from Alpin. Yeah. Hold down, just made his tank invulnerable and just completely overwhelmed Jibber. If it was a bait, it was a masterstroke. Well played by him. Oh, he's going to kill him on retreat possibly here. This could be curtains. Let's check that health. 70, 48, 36. They're dead. Repair done. What now? Oh, man. What a quick turnaround. Once that second Panzer IV arrived, Jibber just got round completely off the field. Pretty well did, didn't he? This could be a bad move, though. He's got double SF commanders with the bazookas. Got some juicy side hits in there, but he's lost both tanks. Let's check how much fuel Jibber has. He's only got 77. And he's in a serious position of copium here because he's going to have to really hop on it in order to survive. <laughs> I wonder if he's going to try go for a Hellcat now. I don't think we've seen any of those. Like, oh, that was a big hit. We are losing control of the sector. I'll tell you what, Elpen's Panzer IV micro has been on point. Ah! Yeah, just going to be a shot. Oh, he got him. Surely that's a hard retreat now. Surely, there we go, finally. Damage, though. 100 health remaining. Oh, so close to a squad wipe. One more shot should do it. Oh, he couldn't quite get it on. Meanwhile, there's the SF commandos with a cheeky grenade. He could just go in here, surely. Does that grenade do anything against tanks apart from block vision? I have never seen that. It didn't do anything. Oh, what? watch this for a shot. Watch this. So grouped. They're so bloody grouped. This could be devastating. Oh, he missed. I was right to hype it, though. I was right. I'm not going to back down from that. Here we go. We've got the Hellcat tightrope. What can it do? Well, it does outrange these Panzer Fours by a whopping five range. <laughs> so, here we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. Forget, no, no. We got planes. Sorry. False alarm. <laughs> Super realistic planes from the, the sky above. I caught an amazing maneuver earlier. One did like a, a barrel triple under. And it did. Go on my clips, guys. If you're just street, uh, joining for this grand final, go on my clips. Trust me. Hellcats going in. Bazookas are going in. We've got the Jaegers trying to hold the line, but they can't. Show, so close to the shoe mine as well. Meanwhile, Panzer IV from a hold down position gets some meaty shots off on the commandos. Hellcat gets out of there. Yeah, I guess the uh, anti tank plane may be timed out, so uh, didn't end up taking a pa another pass from that. Doesn't have any repairs back at base. Oh, he's got the mechanized, I suppose. It's very slow, though. Look at the victory point score, though. Elpern's been able to solidify his dominance 
It, it may not matter that the Hellcat just picked up that Panzer IV because he's in double digit figures and that's very uh, psychologically damaging. Yeah, and that's where that manpower cost reinforcements just allowing Alpen to continue pump out these tanks. He's just got so much manpower to spare compared to Gemma. Scout squad. Very dead. Enemy infantry scattered, yeah, very much. Bits of them scattered all over the place. Yeah, well, I think Jibber's got one last roll of the dice here. He, he's not even going to wait for the Hellcat to be fully repaired. That's... Got to get something going. That seems a tad foolish one. Could say. The enemy is down to only 50 points. What can he Stand do? Firm. He's going to go for the victory point in the southwest, it would seem. But there's Wehrmacht troops waiting for them. Territory lost. Oh, is he finally going to run over that mine this time? Yeah, looks like it. Sector nope. Now under enemy control. Maybe not. Oh, just off to the side. Hey, I tell you, the damage on the Hellcat's the massive on these Panzer IVs, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's solid. Oh, there goes the mine. He's, dead. Leave him. he's really trying to cap, but it's just not working out. I think he's going to drain out here too fast. Yeah, six VPs remaining. This isn't going to happen. It's a triple cap. That's all she wrote. Elpern's back in the series. The enemy has fallen. We fight another day. Yeah, it was a great comeback. Well played. Good comeback indeed. Loving it. And um, Yeah, I think that first Sherman from Jibber just wasn't really damaging enough. No. Didn't lead to enough territory control for Jibber to just kind of snowball and slow down that first Panzer IV even more. Yeah, it was a good game though, to be honest. A very good game. And I'm glad that yeah. this series wasn't a whitewash. And I'm glad we now really do have a series on our hands. It's 2-1 to Jibber, and we're still on road to Tunis, and uh, yeah, let's see how uh, Elpern does as the allies. And have to send me the uh, other replays. I will. I didn't know we'd have to use them today, but we certainly bloody do. Let's get them sent to you. Uh, big thanks, by the way, to today's admins, who were Fictin, Moped, and Sidewinder, who did a good job for us today. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, where do we get the replays from? But yeah, that was just <laughs> it was a good bait from Alpin. You know, he's he had that low health tank. He put it hull down, and Jibber just had such bad luck. I think he like bounced or missed like five shots in a row. Yeah. <laughs> And then in the process, the other second Panzer IV arrived, and that was just the GG maneuver. Yeah, it bloody was. Could have been uh, a very different story. Let's put this bloody. All right, we'll be back in two or three minutes. Tightrope, do you need to take a toilet break or get some water or something? Yeah, might as well. All right, yeah. We'll um, tight. We'll be back in about three or four minutes, guys. See you in a second. <laughs>
loiter in now. Oh, look! We've got the loiter in now. Oh, look got... at that! Whoa. Oh, my God! We've got the loiter in now. Oh, look! We've got the loiter in now. Oh, look! We've got the loiter in now. Oh, look got... at that! Whoa. Oh, my God! That was uh, incredible! Uh... And welcome to Game 4. You're looking at... That's right, it's Alpern's British Forces. And um, and he is up against the almighty, almighty Jibber Jabber Jobber. Um, yeah. yeah. He's gone Fearmucked and he's gone for a kitten cred. Haven't seen too much of those lately. <laughs> no. No, you haven't. Cat and Crads, um, the reason we're not seeing most of, uh, a lot of them recently is the communication cables for 35 munitions are, uh, they're not as good as they once were. In fact, you don't, you probably won't see them this game, in fact. Oh, you know, these are, these are pros. These guys can keep their units alive. Maybe, maybe. I just doubt it, unfortunately. I doubt we'll see the, uh, little An infantry Cat and Crads that trained. could. Have their communication cables. Sorry, this is my second best of five series of the day. Unfortunately, I've already cast a best of five that went four games, and uh, I um, I need tightrope to carry me. 
Tightrope, you're here with a mission, sir. And you're oh, okay. <laughs> Treat me like a 2v2 partner, a, a blind, deaf, and dumb 2v2 partner that is certainly not a pinball wizard. Oh, a pinball wizard, did you say? I did. It's just, I alluded to the lyric from the band The Who. Oh, okay. I'm uh, not familiar. You're not familiar with the song Pinball Wizard? No. Uh. Okay, just carry me, please. That's, that's all we need. That's all we need. <laughs> <laughs> right, Grenadiers are oh, trying to hold the victory point in the centre whilst the Royal Engineers be the dastardly Welshmen they are. There's two of them in total for Elpen. He's also got the Dingo on the field. Yeah, I wonder if he scouted out that uh, kitten and now he's going hunting for it. The Kettencraft's already in base, so that's... You know, it's in a safe place for now. The dingo will find it. Dingo has really high penetration, by the way, on its gun. Uh, I think it's like five penetration long, seven near, something like that. It's very high for a, uh, a munitions point. LMG or machine gun. Hmm. Any weird uh, inverted profiles in this game? Tightrope, just like in KOTU. Um, I haven't really looked at that too much. They do have the graphics tool available, I believe. I think there's two actually in the community. I've not yet to delve in them into them, but I know you. Yeah, I still look at most of the stats just uh, in the mod tools, you know. This guy's he's gone past graphing. He just downloads the numbers <laughs> into his brain. That's all he exactly. needs. <laughs> now it's kind of helpful still because you know, like. Infantry sections have one man with the pistol, so you got to account for that. Certainly have. Well, he didn't go for the cables. He went for the SMGs on these green deers instead. A strategic point is being uh, I've got somebody calling me, and it looks like it could be important. Tightrope, could you pause at three minutes and fifty-five, please? Sorry. All right. Hang on a sec, guys. Okay, yeah, it, it's fine. Um, okay, three, two, one, play. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that right, Tightrope? Four minutes? Yeah, um, yeah. Good man, good man. Yeah, it was my mom. Apparently, the house is building down. I just told her I was doing a co-tournament. It's going to be fine. Meanwhile, we've gone for the Assault Grenadiers with the MP40 Assault Package for Jibber. Is that the right map for that tactic? Well, I mean, it kind of makes the greedy as useful, but it's, yeah, a lot of wide open space on this map, you're right. Oh, he's going to go in for the Faust, the Dingo. Oh, he gets it! Oh, there dingo it goes. down! I always like the Brit There you go, like one little mistake, and uh, it slides out. How do you like your British infantry tightrope? Rare? Numbers. Medium? Well done? The enemy has pushed us back from our sector. Uh, <laughs> like zoom in on the dingo, you'll know exactly what I mean. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, they're, they're getting pretty well grilled in there. <laughs> yeah, it's not pleasant, actually, now we come to think of it. Remember, this is the game, everybody. I wasn't uh, <laughs> trying to sell it. I wasn't... I, I do not advocate the grilling of human flesh just just so that's out there okay now that's finished with royal engineers are gonna go for the casbah but these grenadiers are hot on their tails and that dingo loss does open up the kitten to just continue capping out on the edges so it is actually a big deal on this particular match so yes, grenadiers get close and personal but they're between two rocks and two hard places. There's a lot of height bonuses going on here, but three grenadiers should be enough. They indeed force away one squad. As um, Jibber is on the warpath in this uh, best of five series. He's currently 2-1 up, and his grenadiers are looking powerful with these MP40 upgrades. But the Panzer Grenadier Company just started up in base, by the way, for Jibber. So it's something we haven't really seen so far. But if any map's going to make an anti-tank gun work, it'll be this one, I suppose. Yeah, 
could do, could do. I've actually seen something very interesting today in uh, the Orange Pest Inca Una games. Tightrope. We saw both Jaeger and um, the other one, basically. We saw a flat 30 and a pack 40 in the same game. He teched both. It's fascinating. Mm. It worked as well, to be honest, on this map. Orange Pest, he was able to get the flat 30, two MG42s, and a pack 40. Two packs in the end, Orange Pest. That's right, he had two packs in the end. He's in chat. It was uh, inspired, absolutely inspired. Big shout out to Orange Pest, by the way. By far the most influential Company of Heroes 3 player. That's like being uh, the world's... Um, I can't say that joke. It's not politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how is he going to make this one work? No, I had the zinger, but I can't say it because yeah. uh, it's 2023, yeah. man. Yeah, that's uh, what the... I thought. <laughs> okay, now the ca ca caveat is the joke used to be you're the world's tallest dwarf, but it doesn't sound right in this year anymore. It doesn't sound no. right. Can't say that, man. Uh, oh, well. I'm seeing a lot of uh, medkit usage by Jibber. It's kind of allowing him a bit of freedom here. Doesn't have to tech the medics quite yet. Doesn't fancy finishing off that shoe mine there because the flare is showing his position. <laughs> Jibber realizes it and cancels planting the mine. That's clever stuff there. Here we go. We've got the MP40s pushing in. Oh, we got a sniper from Jibber. And straight away vet one, so he went for the vet upgrade from his uh, infantry company as well. Nice. What does that give him access to? Is it oh, the pinning shot, I believe? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that being used so far, so that's something to look forward to. Sounds useful to me, pinning shots. I like the sound of it. Sounds like uh, the ability from Code 2, whatever that was called back in the day. Lost munitions though, so I mean, what's that about, you know? Oh, so, well, well, I thought everything was free in this game. <laughs> oh, Vermat's constantly getting scammed, clearly. They look sunburned. Like, uh, you've taken some Welshmen and put them in Tunisia. I think that's about right. That's historical authenticity for you guys. Right, Sniper's doing some capping at the moment in the north. He's got his uh, one kill, and he's gone capping duty. Yeah, well, there's not a lot of British infantry on the field at the moment, and he doesn't have to worry about that dingo chasing him down either. That's dead, so pretty free at the moment for the sniper. Armoured vehicle training is being prioritised by Alpen, giving medium-heavy vehicles a boost in veterans' points and improves their performance in veteran units. Curious. He's already got an infantry training, but... Surely, I mean, could he have tech that when he gets his vehicle? Oh, oh. oh Willie, he knows. Willie. Willie 2 is here. I don't understand your username. He's pointed it out. It's going to be British Air and Sea, is it? Or British Armour, sorry, with the Cruiser Crusader AA medium tank calling. Definitely. Uh... Yeah. That's what it's going to be. And he's not revealed it yet because, of course, you can see the commander's in the menu options. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's strats though, you know? That's, that's that's high level play right there. Not picking your commander so they can't see it. Yeah, well played, Willy. Good work. Just like this Stug's doing good work on this tree. Creating that with the machine gun straight away. Oh, the sniper. What is he doing? <laughs> He's getting so deep into enemy territory, the pioneer is spotting for him. Takes another shot. Commander. Still Ooh. under fire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he shot him on down, retreat. <laughs> oh, he could get the kill. He could get it. Oh, it oh. misses just about. Look at this from Jibber. He wants to finish this series off right here, right now. Tightrope. He doesn't want any more messing around. Yeah, well, he's he's sitting pretty right now. Seems like Alpern, you know, really taking some time off while he waited for this Crusader to arrive. Don't forget, guys, the winner of this series gets $300. The loser only 100 and 
think it's 20 or 40. So basically any big RNG things you can say, ah, it's $150 down the drain. And um, yeah. We're losing a few points. Saving a action. lot of funds at the moment for the uh, Master League, the finals 2023. Which I bloody hope we get a balance patch in time for. Do you reckon you can make us another 20 second intro tonight, Rue? I'll ask you now so you can't say no. <laughs> uh, when's the timing of that? Uh, for July, I think it is. Uh, yeah, I could probably do something. You've still got the Adobe files, I know you have. Oh, you, oh, you want me to just redo the Yeah, ones? completely redo it, yeah, co free footage. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if it's just cut and pasting footage, it's easy. Yeah, now we got it. Tightro, by the way, makes some excellent transitions. He made a lot of the uh, masterly transitions for Co2. He's a multi talented, lovely man. Mine detonates there. Stug can do nothing but miss at the moment. Sniper backpedaling. Jibber's got him in his sights with this recce package. But the sniper is getting out of there. Oh! And runs back to base, as does the Kettengrad. Here comes that Crusader. He's on the field now, making his presence felt. Who strokes? Oh. This Al Alpine doesn't have like any anti tank, right? Not even anti tank grenades. <laughs> he can't do anything against these strokes. <laughs> Stugs are going to run all over him, it would seem. How's he going to counter this? He's just gone for another Crusader. He's like, I don't care about those Stugs. What? No! That's insanity. Surely that's insanity. I am so sure that Elpern has a better idea than that. Because these Stugs are going to surely just rain death upon him. He doesn't have any like sections spare to go for boys' rifles either. Oh, we got the Ricky package. He just has to outkill him with the Crusaders. It's that simple. He has to go on a mad crusade. Does. And he is. Here we go. Here he is. He's gone all the way around the side of the map. Sniper could be next. Maybe he'll make a beeline for base. No, he won't. Meanwhile, Stugs are coming back because the Crusaders are on the other side of them at the moment. This is madness from Elpern. Absolute madness. Stugs hit this Crusader twice now in the side. That's damaging for certain. Here come the recce sections. Okay, looks like the Crusader wants to go back in for another base inspection. Happy Aaron Bitter. He's gonna, oh, he's deleting Jibber's oxygen. Yep. Sniper, by the way, has seven infantry kills only, but the psychological damage on Elpern has been untold. Ooh, Crusader taking a few hits from the Stoke. Stoke has a bit of trouble keeping pace with it, though. Those, you know, fixed gun weapons. Not Ooh, this in this help, though. Oh, this Faustal help, though. This Faustal certainly help. He got an engine damage on the side there. Stoke's got him in his sights. Surely this will be a kill. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing really to stop him from chasing all the way to base, so it's definitely going to be a dead Crusader. Could be a dead Gren in the north. Let's go back over to dead Crusader. Dead Gren. Dead Crusader. Dead Gren. Oh, the Gren survived. Oh, no. That's brilliant for Elpern. Oh, heartbreaker. Oh, sorry. Brilliant for Jibber. Terrible for Elpern. There's, that's the order of things I wanted to say there. That's not what he wanted at all. He didn't get the kill and he may lose both Crusaders. This could be Jibber with a big Grand Finals victory. Oh, Strugs in hot pursuit here. How is he still alive? Six health! And it's dead. There was another Stug. There's always another Stug. Well, uh, that's, that's a big problem for Alpern. Two tanks down. Doesn't really have an answer to these Strugs at all. Like, he doesn't oh, have an anti-tank gun. He's got nothing. He does have something. 
If you're down on your luck, there's always the boys. And he's getting the boys anti tank rifles as we speak. His madness, his reign of recce madness is over. Hopefully this Royal Engineer squad with his frying pan will survive. Need some uh, crispy bacon and eggs and base. Oh, damn it. He's dead. One boys against three strugs, though. You know? I don't know. My money's on the boys. I can kind of eventually go for it. Churchill, but that's still a long way off in terms of resources. Yeah. There's going to be something going between now and then. Well, it's closer than you think. I think it's 100 and... Well, oh, no, I think he... I can't see it. Oh, no, he should select it, but he hasn't selected it yet. I think it's like 120 fuel, 400 manpower, I'm guessing. Something like that. So as soon as he selects it, we'll see. He shouldn't be too far off, but he's having to reinforce all of these half-dead squads, so... Yeah... He's pretty much toast at the moment. The enemy has claimed a sector. Wow, I wasn't too far off, Tassos. I'm happy with that. I was 80 manpower off. A he has been trying to learn the game, guys, in between uh, long shifts at work and IRL. And this kitten still alive for Jibber. It has to be said. A capping monster. He is a monster. Look at him. He's got no engine noise for me points. right now. He is a beast. We have 200 points remaining. Look at that Giga Chat. Went to training out fast for Alpine as well, under 200. Yeah, without looking exactly cop top. How can he even make a comeback here? We'll have to be. He's gone for the Black Prince? He's gone for the Black Prince? He's gone for the Black Prince. He's. I, I have to say it again, Tightrope. What the hell? Well, it's a bit more expensive to save for. Does he really think he can last that long? A bit more. It's, he's, he's now just about got the fuel for a normal Churchill. Um, so it would have been perfect timing for a normal Churchill. But it, as, as uh, Willie just said in chat, he is so far behind on victory points. Trying to prioritise capping at the moment, but uh, Vet 2 Sniper with 33 health is just teabagging him all over the place. The Black Prince is a monster when it comes to anti-tank, though. It does huge damage. If he can get there, and right now he's about to be triple capped. And uh, it would seem like he can't. He's going to have to stop uh, reinforcing some of these squads as well, to be honest. If he wants a chance, he's going to have to cap with these Royal Engineers. Oh, this is going to be... If he somehow... Oh, he could catch the Sniper here. He could, in theory, catch the Sniper. But Jibber's hot on it. And he's going to vault over, parkour style. And uh, keep um, Wilhelm alive. Royal Engineers can't get the cap in the centre. Oh, no. No, he's getting sniped as he tries to go for this cap. Yeah, and he's, the cap's been stopped as well. He's just been fed to Jibber's hungry, hungry manpower machine. Jibber's hurtling towards his first major tournament win, I want to say. I don't think I've seen him win a major tournament before. I have to check my spreadsheets. Yeah, to, just to my knowledge, yeah. We have 100 points left. If he'd gone for boys' anti-tank rifles on these... Uh... Yeah, GG, well played. It's been called Jibber is your ML2 champion. The Flying Dutchman is on top of the scene with some fantastic plays in um, in this tournament. He's done really well, so big congratulations to him. And uh, he also saved the day in um, today's stream as well because he happened to have a copy of Tunisian Pass saved down on his computer before it got updated. So big well played. And uh, he's an absolute legend, isn't he? He's been so, so good behind the scenes, hasn't he, Jibber, over the years, uh, tightrope. Um, so good with staff. Yeah, he's very valuable on the balance team. He's done a lot of work with me on the Master League systems and the stats as well. He's just an all-round great guy. So congratulations to him for, for, not, for a phenomenal victory. Well played, Jibber.
So there we go. And uh, big shout out to Tightrope as well. Give him a, a bit of love in chat. It's not too bad waking up at 6 a.m., you know? Was it not too bad? You feel good. You've got a full Sunday ahead of you now. How about yeah, that? Yeah, UFC today, so we're watching that later. What's today, mate? Sorry? Oh, UFC. Oh, yes. Uh, Israel Adesanya, Adesanya or something versus somebody he's beaten three times before. Is that right? Something like that? Yeah. Why is that so hype? He's beaten him three times before. Israel's lost three times. Oh. But why is it hype then if he's lost three times? Because he was like the reigning UFC champion for like, I don't know, maybe six fights or something until he got beaten by him. Oh, so it's the rematch. Yeah. And he's a really good fighter, is he? Yep. Oh, okay. I might watch that tomorrow morning then. Um, Jip says they actually played G5. Um... <laughs> it's kind of over now. Tasty num nums. Tightrope, what are you gonna do with your day? You gonna do you wanna stream now and get a cheeky host or you gonna... No, I can't do that. No, alright then mate, alright. <laughs> <laughs> Six AM yeah, it's it's nah. But yeah, keep an eye out for the uh guide on the, the elevation bonus. Yeah, let's, definitely. Yeah. Let's uh, let's keep an eye on that. It should be on his uh, his YouTube channel soon. We'll all learn from that. I'm sure he'll give us the uh, the juicy insight on it. And yeah, it's been a great day. Thank you everybody for your support. Big thanks to the admins that have been active. The ones I'm aware of being active, of course, Stern Panther last Saturday. He did a lot then. Um, so big thanks to him. And then we've got Ficton Moped. Who had to get off, but he's been really helpful today. Another German. Germans are good admins, basically. And then, of course, we had Sidewinder, who's been active today. So, big thanks to the admins for keeping the train rolling. Uh, I don't actually want to look... Oh, I'm going to have to know the results sometime. So, let's go check out the rest of the results on the bracket, shall we? Before we head off, it's a good idea. And they have been filled out, all of them. We've got loads of completed series. So, that's really hype. Let's go check it out. What a what a good, lovely thing to do. Um, I'll fill in these ceremonially now. Three, one, to the mighty jibber. Climbing up the rankings into second place, overtaking Elpern there. And we've got Inca Una, who I believe lost 3-1. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I cast it early, I should know. Meanwhile, Nagano beat Yumaira in Bra 3-1. A lot of 3-1s today, that's pretty hype, bloody hell. Cool stuff. Ferragi keeping his rank after defending it, ending in the top eight still. Um, versus Xfidi, who did really well in this tournament. Barton lost to Hulk Smash. Now there's an upset victory. Bloody hell. That's a big loss from Barton there. I wasn't expecting that one. Well played to Hulk Smash, a co one player of very high repute from back in the day. Meanwhile, Captain Link heroically lost to Theodosios 3-1, so well played to him. Uh, Prabatino Zilgath did not know it was a best of five, so they uh, played three games only. Zilgath 1-2-1. One, one. Um, Happy Cat beat Noob Nath 3-0. No surprises there, no offence to Noob Nath. But, uh, yep, Happy Cat's best Chinese player on the market. Markov 3-0 over OMG Pop, a legend from the Amipol at Siphonk tournament days back in the day. Yeah, I lost to him on ladder just just earlier this week. Oh, did you? Nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> and we had the Battle of the Sloths. Momo, who styles himself a sloth, versus a player called the Sloth. And your victorious sloth is Momo for show, everybody. Was it ever in doubt? Possibly not. Wolf beat Jack, 3-1. And Armless oh, Guy Gaming, everybody, took a game off Vindy. That's huge! Vindy Carex, a, a player that was in semi-finals of Amiplot Ami Siphonk era tournaments back in Common Heroes 2. Our Armless Guy Gaming, doing it for people with disabilities, literally has no arms, took a game off him. Oh, don't say that, Orange Pest... Don't ruin it. He took a game off him. It was 
absolutely phenomenal. I'm not showing <laughs> Orange Pest chat on screen. <laughs> I did not. Well uh, earned, I'll say. Well earned. Good, good show, old chap. You've, you've dominated. Orange Pest, you have no heart, no no heart whatsoever. Go look at yourself in the mirror. I did not know it was a DQ, by the way. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but there we go. There we go. By the way, guys, I'm a little bit torn on what to do for ML3. I don't know whether we should do the same format again or um, go a little bit more traditional and do like a just a 16-player bracket and then maybe have some wild cards and basically say to the players, "Listen, you got to go. You got to go play some auto match again because this MLR system isn't really working when we've got so many dropouts. We have had a lot, lot of dropouts, so uh, I'm not sure." Whether to stick with it or twist. I don't know at this point. But it's not as effective as I wanted it to be. Thanks to so many bloody dropouts. Oh well. It's to be expected though, tightrope. I tell you, at the start of Co2, so many Co1 tournaments just quit. And like never played Co2. And we're having that same thing again. It's like history mm. repeats itself. It's just, we're so predictable as a community. Well, yeah. It's, you know, that's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, a big two times a limb tourney would be good, Orange Pest. I do like double limbs, but... Um... <laughs> Five hours series. I can never tell when Orange Pest is being serious. But yeah, any more shout-outs? Really? Of course, shout-outs to the patrons mm -hmm. of the Master League. They're all beautiful people, and they are funding this activity. Uh Every single cent they donate on a monthly basis goes into these tournaments. And this tournament was very unique because we paid down to 16 places. Had loads of... Um... People joining the Master League in the past uh, couple of months, so big thanks to them. That's so true, Juice Nimbus. Big shout out to Relic for the skins. Um, without the Forest Ranger skin for British, a term not used in Britain, by the way. Um, I, I don't know where we'd be. So that's awesome. Big shout out to GB Pirate for this dog. Apparently, he had to go to the vets today, which is good. Any other shout outs, uh, Tightrope? Shadowwater, maybe? Yeah, I've been playing some good twos with Shadowwater. You know, they're a good time. <laughs> Maybe I can talk him into getting into some Master League. You definitely should. We absolutely need, as well, a whiteboard strategic breakdown. You know the ones he used to do. Yeah, they were classic. Absolutely classic. Uh, yeah, I think it's been a good stream. It's been a good day. Sorry for low energy, guys. I did cast another best of five earlier, so I'm a bit knackered. Oh, we've got Elpern. He's hot on the streaming button. Let's go get a breakdown from him. Oh, yes. Why not? Thanks, Tightrope. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you. Rating in five, four, three, two, one. Read.